Okay, before we jump right into the haircut, I am going to talk about body positioning and sheer positioning for a minute. So body positioning is really important, and I don't think we think about it enough because we want our haircuts to be nice and strong and straight and just really good lines. But how can we do that if our body's not angled correctly? So our body needs to be straight for the haircut to come out straight. So being straight means, you know, legs shoulder width apart, shoulders, you know, nice and aligned, back straight, and then working within your strike zones. So if you know baseball, your strike zone is between your shoulders and your hips, and this is where your body is straight. Going anything above that, you're starting to twist your back and losing how straight the hair is. Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense to you guys, okay? Like I said, working in the strike zone, keeping our body nice and straight with our feet and our shoulders completely aligned and also working directly behind our section, which we'll talk about when we get into the haircut. And then sheer positioning. We all know, you know, hold it like that. But then also, you know, when you're cutting the hair, are you going to be cutting point cutting, cutting back, you know, just kind of focusing on that. We'll go into that a little more when we start the haircut, but mostly right now it's the body positioning that I'm worrying about. Another thing with shears, I like to wrap it under my pinky and hold it like this when I'm not using my shears because then it gets out of my way and I have the rest of my hand to work with. All right, give me a thumbs up or a heart if that's making sense to you guys. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and head into our haircut. I'm just going to turn Michelle a little bit. So Connor, just kind of follow me around. Perfect. So can you scoot back just a little, make sure we get everything in here. So for this layering technique, I start in the back and I don't actually set a guide on top because her head is my guide. I don't want to set a guide up here and then drop it down because I'm not sure what her head shape is at that point. So I want to actually start from the bottom up, if that makes sense. So I already set my perimeter. I'm going to take one, about an inch width section in the back, drawing it straight down. That's why I have long nails because I can section without a comb. It's fantastic. And then... Like I said, we're talking about combing today too. So see how that hair is all nice and straight? That's what we need. Every haircut, every section has to be nice and perfectly straight. If it's not, keep combing. Comb from both sides. No bends here. So normally we elevate the hair up and cut it like so. Today, we are actually going to over direct the hair directly across from where it naturally lays. So I'm combing directly across from what naturally is. What that looks like is you're pulling it completely straight out. So see how we have this massive corner here? That's what we're taking off. And then it's completely straight, straight line off of her head. My fingers are completely parallel or straight down to the ground. And that's how I know the section is correct. Because when I over direct it back after cutting it, kind of follow my fingers. See, it's going to have that nice, harsh angle and it's going to fall down beautifully. So let's go ahead and cut this section now. Again, taking a one inch width section, combing both sides, roots to ends, really getting that in there. I had one of my mentors one time when I was doing hair cutting, she came up to me during a class and she said, you cut hair really well, but your combing sucks. So your haircut's going to suck. <laughs> and I took that to heart. And so now I focus heavily on my combing and then I'm going to grab it from about an inch above, grab behind the comb, over direct it, completely straight out from where it lays, not bending here, not bending up, completely straight. Fingers completely straight to the ground. My guide is right there. If you notice all the hair back here from the uh, occipital fell out. Now I'm gonna go in and point cut. And point cutting, I tell all my new stylists I'm training, if you're point cutting at a completely straight in 90 to the hair, 90 degrees to the hair, you're texturizing. If you're at a 45, you're cutting. So I'm going to go and texturize that a little bit. See, I have that nice broken up line so it doesn't cause any lines or choppiness in the back. Then I'm going to let it fall back and it creates a nice, soft, beautiful take layer in there. You can kind of see it starting to work. We only have a one inch section, so obviously we're not going to see a lot. Then I'm going to take that section, hold it straight out from the head. There's my corner connecting my uh, length to my layer, point cutting that corner at a 90. So I'm more texturizing it as opposed to taking out length there. Michelle does have a finer texture of hair. So I would like to leave some in there so it doesn't look like she lost density through her ends. 
and then I just lay that down. And you can kind of see we're starting to build a little bit of a layer in there. Now I'm going to take my next section, again, an inch width, right next to the text section we just took. I'm not going to go farther than this yet because I don't want to work in her conversion points. So that is, you know, right behind the ear, right where the hairline shifts back here. That's going to be right where our conversion point is because that's where the hairline is changing and when the head is rounding. So I don't want to go in there because if I took a vertical section through this, I'm cutting off her perimeter. And if I cut this section wrong, I'm creating a hole in my haircut. So I want to leave that out for now. I don't want to touch any of that perimeter so I can leave all of her density and not create any holes. So again, combing from the roots to the ends, directing it up as I comb, putting my fingers behind the comb. Sorry, gotta get it comfortable in my hand. And then going out directly from where it lives. So if you look, I'm actually going across the top of her head now at a diagonal because that's where her hair lives. It's gonna fall directly back. And I come back up here and I took a little bit of a section from my last um, section and I can see my guide right here, my guide right here, and I'm gonna point cut in. Point cutting closer to a 40, so I'm actually taking length. Getting some of that hair out of there. Right there looks a little heavy. I'm just gonna go in and 90 texturize that since I'm already here, so I don't have to later. Then I'm gonna direct it back down. You can see a little bit of that layer that it's creating right there. How it's a nice, beautiful movement down. That's because this is based on her head shape. So pulling it at a 180 like that, the hair is falling directly out of her head shape and making it so it's a perfect, smooth transition down, creating that beautiful movement we're looking for. Like I said, this is not a haircut where it's like a shag, anything with nice, defined layers. This is really soft, subtle movement. So here's our corner, there's our layer, there's our length, point cutting at a 9B to leave some of her density through here. Because like I said earlier, she does have a finer texture. So we want to make sure we preserve as much density through her ends as possible. Okay, so see, we have this section right here done. See how it just has a little more movement. You can see a little bit of that layer in there. It's really soft and subtle. We don't want anything too drastic, just nice and subtle. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side of the middle. So the right side of the middle now. Did the left side, now we're doing the right. So I'm not going to her conversion point, leaving that out. Taking a small bit from the middle section, combing, walking it up with the comb. If I were to grab it down here and then just pull it, see I have a big dip right here. Yep, big dip right there. Don't want that. That's going to create an uneven cut. So I'm going to come up, comb it, and walk it up with my comb. And then I'm going to come in, my fingers, direct it up directly across from where it lays. So we're making a diagonal across the top of the head. You can see my guide poking through there, point cutting at a 45, and then texturizing at a 90. Directing it back down, picking up the same exact section like we did before, and then point cutting out that corner so there is a beautiful seamless blend. Point cutting at a 90 to maintain her density. And there we go. So now we have the back done course not to the conversion point but you can see we just have some nice movement in there so when she curls it it's going to be really like noticeable but straight it's not going to look like there's layers in it because she doesn't want anything drastic she just wants some movement through the ends okay now we're going to start on the sides so I'm going to take a one inch section like we have been directly above her ear and now I'm going to walk to the other side so with this, body positioning is important because I'm going to be on the other side of her at all times. I'm actually going to come around. On, when I'm working on my client's right side, I stand directly in front of them because I want my fingers pointed towards the floor. I don't want them pointing upwards. I want towards the floor. So it's a little awkward sometimes, but that's okay. Because she's getting a great haircut out of it. <laughs> right, Michelle? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay, so going directly across from where the hair lives, hair pointed down. My legs are shoulder width apart. Shoulders are as straight as they can be when I'm standing in front of a client. And I'm gonna point cut at a 45 and texturize at a 90. Awesome. Do we have any questions, Connor, coming in? No questions. Perfect. If you guys do have any questions, don't be afraid to leave them in the comments. I'll be glad to answer anything. And then the sides, because they're thinner, we have a very subtle corner 
I'm just taking the very tips off. I'm still leaving a corner. I'm just taking the tips off so it's a little more blended. But again, leaving that corner for her density. Okay, now here's where we're going to connect the sides to the back. So the hairline lives on an angle. You look there, you know, it's a diagonal back. So I want to take it very similar, my section similar to the hairline uh, perimeter. So I'm going to come in the middle of the back, in the middle of the side, and create a triangle over the conversion point. So the point of the triangle is about an inch up from the perimeter on all ends. So the perimeter under here is protected and at the very base of the nape it's protected as well. And this line is pretty closely mimicking the natural line of her hairline. So a reason I took, yeah. <laughs> Thanks Brindley. I'm assuming that's uh, my coworker Brindley. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Renly's great. She just graduated from being an assistant in our salon. She was my assistant for three months, I think. So she knows this in haircut inside and out. Okay, so now we have our section, our nice triangle. Same thing. I'm going to pull it directly over across from where it lives. So it's a great diagonal. Now here's my guide. Here's my perimeter. Here's my guide. Point cut out of 45. Texturize at 90. Okay, so through here, because this is probably the thickest section on the head, it is going to probably have a corner through right here. You can see it's still a little heavy right there. When I move it, it has a little less movement just right here, which is normal. So now I'm just going to do one last section directly over the conversion point, making sure I don't drop, have any of my hairline. This will fall out when I pick it up. Comb it up straight from where the head, the hair lives on the head. There's my corner, point cut it out. I went a little bit heavier on the point cut and the conversion point because that hair is thicker, so it needs a little more blending than it would otherwise. Okay, there's some awesome movement in there. And you can see the layers popping out. Because the way I colored her hair where she has a bit of a shadow box under here, it makes the layers a little more defined, which is awesome because it just gives her color more dimension and more movement as well. Okay, let's move back to the sides. So we already got from the middle of the side, back connected. Now we're gonna do the top part of the side, front part of the side, if you will. So normally we'd think to pick up that whole section, but I don't want to, because she has a recession like everyone does. It's normal to have this recession right there in the hairline. And the same thing is with our perimeter back here. I don't wanna cut into this because I'm gonna create a hole right around her face. So I'm going to drop that out and we will come back and connect it later, later with a new technique. So I'm going to leave that completely alone and just do this a little bit. There won't be a lot to cut off because it is such a small section, but it's important. So standing directly in front, feet shoulder width apart, shoulders aligned, combing well, pulling it directly over. And there's my guide, same guide there, guide there. It's very small. Some people it will be a larger guide than others just depending on their head shape so these sections will change size slightly depending on their head everyone has a different size head so the sections are going to be different sizes because we are working based on head shape so i'm going to pull out that section again that we did not cut and then i'm going to connect that corner there's a tiny baby one right there just take that off nice and easy so we have some beautiful layers happening through the side now, but it's still heavy in front, which is okay, because we'll connect that in in a minute. We're gonna do the other side and then do her curtain bangs and then connect the layers in. I always cut the perimeter first. What's up? So we have a couple comments. Courtney yeah. Buck says, amazing tips. <laughs> Thank you, Courtney. And we have a question. Yeah. So Christine Rear is asking, if the client wants to see more of her layers instead of invisible, can you tweak it to press, uh, to create a heavier layered look? Yes, yes you can. You can always take these and make them your own. If I want a heavier layer look, I'm actually gonna set my guide in in the very beginning, or now I'm not working with a guide. I would set my guide in the very beginning up top, like a traditional layer, and then do this section. So if I set a guide in first, I would have a guide, you know, say I wanted this short, sorry, wanted it about there then I would see my guide and cut it there. 
and then connect it back around. So it'd give you a little bit heavier layer because you're taking more off. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it back around like I was doing. Straight across from where it lives. There's my guide. There we go, point cutting at a 45 to take length. Okay, there's that tiny corner we're just gonna cut. And real quick, I'm just gonna check that it's even on both sides. A little bit shorter, that's okay. So I just connected that. Normally I pick up a guide from the other side, I just kinda forgot today, which is fine because we can just go back and sit our guide and then do it again. And take it back around. There's my guide right under there. You can kind of see it's a small one. I'm just going to put that back in. And then check my corner again. Take it off. Okay, now middle of the side, middle of the back, creating a triangle over the conversion point. So we have yeah. a question. Yes. Uh, Stefan Kravitz is asking, would that layering technique still work on like a lob length or would you use another technique? Um, it would work on a lob length. You're just going to get very subtle layers. And the only difference is when you're connecting this front to the back, you want to be careful not to lose length in the front because a lob is typically longer in the front. So what I would do is I'd create this section as I have it now. But instead of combing from both directions, I would actually just comb from the back like this and then connect it nearly all the way to the back, middle of the back. That way you're over directing to keep your length in the front. And you already have your guide set in the front so you can see it when it's back here. So you're pretty safe in not taking off more length, but just over directing it for extra protection for yourself to make sure you don't take too much. But yes, this looks good on nearly every length. Perfect. Does that make sense? So if you're cutting a lob, directing it back to maintain your length in the front. But if you are not cutting a lob, just do it directly over the where the hair lives, out of the head. That's so awesome. Great. I'm glad that helped. I hope you can use this layering technique. It's one of my favorite. Every one of my salon uses it so much. It's like our go-to. Okay, so Connor, come around this way, around the front of Michelle if you can. Thank you. So you can see it's laying over, but then if you look at our guide here, you can kind of see how it gets thinner. That's my guide all in there. Those little hairs peeking through. There's my guide. There we go. And now I'm going to texturize at a 90. Okay. Direct it back. Let it lay down. Connor, come over here if you can so we can look at this. So we're going to check it. I always check my layers by honestly just kind of wiggling them and seeing the movement in the layers. So it still looks a little heavy right there. I'm not getting the movement I want to see. I'm gonna take a one inch section directly over that part, making sure I leave the perimeter out so I don't affect that. Pulling it up directly straight out from where the, head, the hair lives on the head. There we go. There's my corner. And again, on the conversion point, I'm actually cutting a little more off the corner than I would anywhere else because the conversion point is the thickest part of the hair. So we have another yeah. question from Courtney Buck. She asks, is this a good technique for curly hair? Yes. I love this technique for textured hair. That's actually one way I developed this technique. I have a coworker who specializes in curly hair and I came up with this technique and had her test on myself because I have curly hair when I decided to wear it that way. And then it worked fantastically and she helped me kind of develop it to make sure it works for textured hair. So yes, I do recommend always cutting it dry though. So if you are doing it on textured hair, have them come in with clean, dry hair the way they normally style it so you can see and cut it that way and then wash it and check it after. Okay, so now we're gonna do this front section. Again, we're dropping out the perimeter on the front. It's still a little thin right there, so I'm actually gonna take more off to leave out because I really wanna maintain all the density I can through the front of her hair. So now that I have my section, I'm gonna come around, standing behind my layer with my fingers pointed towards the ground. Remember, you want your fingers towards the ground. Just a tiny bit to take off because that was a really small section. 
I'm going to pick it up again. Just check the corner. I don't think there will be one right here, but just in case there is. Oh yeah, just a tiny one. There we go. Okay. So we have another question. Yes. From Brenda Steele. She asks, mm -hmm. what brand of shoes do you use? Yes, that's a fantastic question, Brenda, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, Brenda. So I'm using right now my Sam Via Artistic Series shears. I really love these because it has a bit longer of a blade, and then they're more ergonomic for the hand, so they don't stretch my hand too far out of position. Um, I also have some Joels I'll use. Those are my original shears out of school. My Joels are. I can grab them out and show them to you real quick. I use these for more of my dry cutting um, for the most part. So these are my texturizers, they're Joelle's. And then these are my original Joelle shears that I'll use sometimes. I use these more when I'm doing dry cutting or if someone has really coarse hair dry cutting because the coarseness can kind of hurt the blade a little bit. So since these are a little bit older, I'll use those and then go in and use these on wet hair. Michelle has a very fine texture of hair, so it's really not gonna hurt my blade any, especially with all the smoothing products I put in. So. I like these and because they're longer so they can get layers a little bit easier. So I prefer uh, longer shears when I'm doing layers. Okay, so let's get a full view of this head. So all the layers are done. We just need to connect the layers to the front after we cut our curtain bangs. So looking beautiful, some nice lovely movement. You can tell when she curls it, it's really gonna pop. Brenda said yes, thank you. Yes, oh good. I'm glad that helped Brenda. Okay, so now I'm gonna part out her bangs. So how I like to do this is where the comb lifts off the head is where I like to put the bangs. Another trick I like to do is right here where the ear meets the skin, put the base of my comb there, roll the hair up. The comb up, not the hair, sorry. Can you see that again? Yep, absolutely. So I'm gonna put the comb at the, where the ear and the skin meet on the side of the head and then roll the comb up the head and then I just kind of drag it to create a section. And then I have it at the top here and connect it around to the corner of the eyebrow or the corner of the eye. Usually they're the same points, but if their eyebrows are maybe a little shorter or longer, go towards the corner of the eye. Typically that hits right in the recession, which is what I want. I'll connect it down after, but right now I just want it in that very top point to create my base, if you will, for the bangs. So then I have it on that side. I'm going to do the same thing on this side because as we kind of talked about earlier, head shapes are all different. And with that means they're actually not even. So you may, clients want the bane section to be even, but based on their head shape, sometimes it's not. And I usually like to go based off head shape because that's just what's going to fit their head best. And if you don't go off head shape, this hair up here is still going to fall in every day and bug her. So I would say trim it off anyways, unless the client doesn't want that. Okay, so now I have it all clipped back <clears throat> and we are going to set in her curtain bangs. So, Michelle, are you okay with them being, you know, about the bridge of your nose here at the shortest? That's fine. Okay, cool. Go ahead and close your eyes for me. And then I want you to tilt your head up slightly. Perfect. I always have my clients close their eyes because some clients like to raise their eyebrows and look at what they're doing. So like raise your, their eyebrows to try and see and like they're like going like this and then you take them shorter. So I always like starting longer <laughs> or starting with their eyes closed so they don't do that. I'm going to take a small section just right in the very middle to set my guide. Combing from either side, pulling it directly down. Mm, it's a little more off center than I want. There we go. Same thing, combing. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I have it here. I'm actually going to let go so I have no tension on it so I can see how our palettes are falling. Because if I pull it like this and then pop up, it's going to go much shorter. So I'm just letting go and then twisting. Okay. And then I'm just twisting, grabbing with my right hand, my cutting hand. I'm going to put my fingers directly on her nose where I want to be. Come in with my left hand, grab it, and then continue the twist. So it's a full 360. What was that? 180. 180. Is it? Yeah, 180. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> and then I'm going to point cut all of that. The twisting kind of helps give it a nice softer look and start the angle of descent down. 
So now that I have my guide set in, I'm gonna take one side and I'm going to comb it directly in front of her nose. So I'll do it again. I'm gonna comb it directly in front of her nose and hold my fingers completely parallel to the ground. Then I'm gonna come in behind my fingers at the guide and slide cut down. There we go. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side, pulling it directly in front of the nose, fingers parallel to the ground. But now I'm gonna to touch my wrists together. So your wrists touch together, come in behind, find your guide, slide, cut down. And then I'm gonna to check to make sure it's even. Because sometimes that can be a little difficult to get it even. All right, we are looking good. So now I'm just gonna make sure they're laying and how I want and the length is what I want. Because sometimes when I do this, the length can be a little too long. So I'm gonna come over here if you will, Connor. Hold it from its natural point where it will lay and just take this kind of tail off. Just because it was a little too much. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side and then we will connect it in and connect it to our layers. All right. Coming in behind, I'm just gonna slide cut that tail off. There we go. Okay, let the hair down. So we want the bangs to be pretty prominent, but we still, I don't love the disconnection between there. So what I'm gonna do is take the point right in front of the ears, straight down. So now it's connecting where we started up here, just all the way down. I'm gonna hold it out. Excuse me, Connor, I will pass you. There we go. Remember, we always gotta be directly in front of what we're cutting, not to the side, because then it's gonna change our body positioning and change how straight the hair is. So I don't wanna do a huge slight cut on this because I don't want to connect it too much. I'm just gonna very lightly take off whatever comes. So it's very subtle, just to blend it in a little bit. And then we'll continue blending this in in a minute. I'm gonna do the same on the other side though. So I'm going to walk around so at this point where it is, where we parted it for the bangs, go completely straight down. So you'll land right in front of the ear. And then just kind of slide cut that off, make it more subtle. There we go. So now they're just a little bit more blended. So they're not such a harsh disconnection. Okay, now we're gonna do our final technique on both sides to connect our layer that we created back here into our curtain bangs because right through here, there's a lot of density that I don't want. So this I call my three point triangle technique, kind of a long name, I just came up with it. So I'm gonna start on the top of her head and I'm gonna go about a quarter of the way back, which is typically where the bangs start, typically. Everyone's head's gonna be a little different. So I'm gonna go about a quarter of the way back and make a triangle going to the middle of the eyebrow. So it's a very small triangle. And then I'm gonna hold it directly up from where the head lays. And then if you look closely, I have two guides in there. I have one here and one down here that's falling out. So I'm just gonna gently point cut that to connect my layers. This is also texturizing the bangs so they're not so heavy. And then my next section is gonna be directly in the middle of the part. So between the front of the hairline and the crown, right in the middle to the corner of the eyebrow. There's the corner of the eyebrow. There we go. Same thing, directly out from where the head lays. And now you can see the real disconnection starting because my guide's all the way up here and my guide's all the way there. So now I'm gonna come in and slide cut that out and connect my guides. And you can see we're starting to lose that density in there but still maintain all our length and create a beautiful layer going back a nice like sweeping layer. So we still have a little bit of density right here. So our last point is going to be at the crown to the corner of the hairline. What the corner of the hairline means, it's where the hairline changes from being the front of the head to right around the ear. So right at this corner. So you can see we're creating a triangle, our part, and then down to the corner of the hairline, doing the same as before combing it straight out from where it lives. 
there's my corner right there because all my guide fell out. So I could slide cut it. I chose to point cut because I had a little bit more control with point cutting. So that's the route I went. Then right here feels a little heavy to me. So I'm just gonna go in and texturize and take out some of that density. Then you can see we created a beautiful sweeping layer that connected all of the hair together, but we kept all of her density and all of the movement in there that we wanted while still having that curtain bang which we'll style up later. I'll post pictures of it completely curled and styled on Instagram. And my Instagram handle is ayhair.stylist. So ayhair.stylist if you wanna see any of the colors I've created and then the results from this haircut as well. Okay, so we're gonna come over to the other side and then do the exact same thing. So it's gonna be about quarter of the way back. Our deciding factors are gonna be the front of the hairline and the crown. So about a quarter of the way back to middle of the eyebrow. Combing the hair out directly from where it lives on the head. There's my guide, there's my guide. I'm just gonna point cut that out. Again, my deciding factor between point cutting and slide cutting is just what I feel I'll have the most control of doing. Then I'm gonna go middle of the way back between the hairline and the crown, middle of the way back to corner of the eyebrow. And here's where we're really going to start seeing some, you know, differences. So I have my guide there, and then my guide's all the way up here. So it's a pretty quick procession. Since I'm on my non-dominant side, I'm going to hold the hair a certain way. So I'm holding it like I would, and then I'm going to flip it back towards me. So my fingers are on the ground. So we start with our fingers in the air, fingers back. And then I'm going to slide cut towards me. To connect it. So it's the same as the other side. I just positioned it so it was more comfortable to me and I had better control. So I'll do it one more time to show you guys because I know it's a little confusing at first. So middle of the way back, corner of the eyebrow, hold it straight up from the head. You can see we have much better um, blending through there. Fingers up in the air, fingers down, point cut towards me, slide cut towards me. Okay. So now our last section is going to be at the crown to the corner of the hairline. That's where the hairline changes from being above the ear to in front of the face. Combing it directly out from where the hair lives on both sides, roots to ends. Good combing is key. There's that big old corner, point cutting that out. I'm gonna take the top of this section and I'm just point cutting at a 90 to texturize because it just felt a little heavier than I wanted it to be. So I wasn't taking any length, just point cutting. There we go, some nice beautiful layering connecting all the way back, giving her that beautiful sweeping layering and movement that we want. Okay. Brenda Steele said, thank you, yeah. I love this. I can't wait to try it. Too. Oh, good, I'm so excited. I hope all of you guys go home and try this try it on your clients. And even a good thing to do as well is take the technique of directing the hair over. Like if you decide this layer technique isn't for your client at that moment, but they still have kind of a shelf up here, don't go in and try and texturize that out. Direct it over and if there's a corner, just snip that off and you're really gonna get rid of a lot of that heaviness. So every piece of this technique can be used in different layerings. So my sectioning of doing one, two, three in the back and then one on each side and connecting over the conversion point I do that no matter what type of layers I'm doing, just because it protects me from creating holes in the haircut. And then I also do that three point triangle technique as I call it on every haircut as well. Cause again, it's just protecting me from creating holes in the haircut. So like we went over today, you're gonna comb really good roots to ends. Your body's gonna be straight. You're gonna have your feet shoulder width apart, shoulders aligned, and you're gonna work within your strike zone. So top of the strike zones at your shoulders, bottom of the strike zones at your hips. You're not gonna work otherwise. And our chairs have these really cool things on them where we can make them go up and down. <laughs> so if they're too high or too low, move it. They move to you a lot easier than you can move to them. <laughs> yes, again, my name is Alyssa Young. I'm a hairstylist based out of Utah. Um, I am a healing artist with Monza. And that is what I had to show you guys today. I'm really excited for all of you to go home and try it in the salon and just be able to get some really soft, lovely movement out of this. 
if you'd like to see more from me, my Instagram is ayhair.stylist. You can also find me through the Lonza Facebook page and Instagram. I have a couple things up on there. And of course, we have our big event coming up in February. I hope you guys will all be there. We have some amazing classes from amazing artists. I'm so excited. So get your tickets, and I hope to see you guys all there soon. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.